Fox Sportsnet coverage of the Longhorn 500 presented by MCI WorldCom is sponsored in part by MCI WorldCom, the official long distance and local service provider of the Pep Boys Indy Racing League. By Pennzoil with Pure Base, made for the way you drive, stop, go, Pennzoil. And by Pep Boys, cars like us, people love us. And by Firestone, America's tire since 1900. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this Fox Sports Net presentation of the Longhorn 500. We're in Fort Worth, Texas on a gorgeous evening. Jack Root alongside, along with Ari Lyon-Dyke, Vince Welsh, and Calvin Fish will cover the pit area for us tonight as we prepare to go racing the Kelly Racing Team, Jack, right up front. It'll be fun to watch those two guys going to work early. One of the co-owners of that is 81-year-old Jim Kelly, and he's going to be leaving in several weeks and going to... Uh, well, Belarus and some of the area there flying his own Challenger aircraft to, to teach surgeons how to do transplants. So uh, he's uh, got a, quite a trip ahead of him. And he's a corporate pilot. Many, many stories will play out here tonight. So far, we've had three different winners, three different pole winners, and the weather conditions just about ideal tonight. Temperature 83 degrees, the humidity at 65%. We had the overcast skies most of the day, mostly cloudy right now, but some sunshine peeking through. And Ari, you talked about this in the pre-race show a little bit about drafting here tonight, and it'll be fun to watch these guys on, on these banks. Well, for sure, and for a night race, we're actually starting pretty early, 6.30, but... Uh... You know, the shade is covering turns uh, four and turns one in the front straightaway. So uh, the, the expectation for the handling of the car uh, from the crews is still going to be what they thought it would be for a night race. And get... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to want to go and finish your thought. Drafting is going to be a key tonight. I think you have to be able to run really close behind another guy going into the turn and being able to maintain the throttle, which would hopefully be full throttle because you have to get a run on him coming off the corner. And a lot of drafting is going to happen tonight. And you pick up six to seven, eight miles an hour in the draft, and you could pick up a draft from two cars. And I think a lot of guys are going to hit the rev limiter tonight. All right, now for the famous command to start your engines, let's go to John Cronin, the Texas Attorney General. Gentlemen, start your engines. Fourteen rows of drivers preparing to go to work here tonight. The Longhorn 500K presented by MCI WorldCom. Let's meet the drivers. The front row, all Kelly racing. Ask Tom Kelly, the car owner, about his drivers. He'll say they're like cups of coffee. Sharp, definitely.
the wall on Friday during the practice session. Scott says a wheel broke free when he went through turn two. He has a broken leg. Vince Welsh caught up with Scott. Scott, update us on how you're, how you're feeling and uh, what's ahead for you. Well, you know, we've uh, broke a bone in my left leg, did some damage to my left knee. I'm not sure if anything's broken or not. Um, did some damage to my right foot. So get back to Indianapolis and uh, go see the guys uh, there. They kind of specialize in this type of stuff and see what they say and hopefully get back on the road to recovery and hopefully get things uh, fixed well enough to be in the car at uh, Pikes Peak. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you at, uh, at Pikes Peak and uh, hopefully the certainty car will be moving towards the front. We will have 12 in-car cameras for your enjoyment tonight. First off, Eliseo Salazar, the car number six. He will be back starting in 20th position tonight in that green machine. Max Mill Dick Simon Racing is back here in the Pep Boys Indy Racing League. Car number seven for Stefan Gregoire, and he's running what we call that narrow track. And Buzz Calkins in car 12, 14th on the starting grid. Bradley Food Mart's back at work tonight. We'll watch Buzz Calkins battle his way. We'll ride on board tonight with a man that has a career best qualifying effort in third, Tice Carlson, and he'll be driving the Blueprint Imke car. Tice Carlson, really a man on a mission these days. It'll be fun to watch him run. Steve Knapp, the 35 car, ISM Racing. He starts 17th on the grid this evening. Lycos in the PCSave.com car for Dallas, Texas' own John Hollinsworth. His dad will be coming to the race as well tonight. And number four with a fourth place finish one year ago, starting in the fourth row, Scott Goodyear starts eighth position. Now, Kenny Brack, who we told you is the defending Pep Boys Indy Racing League champion and Indy 500 champ, the power team, you'll ride on board with them this evening. What a great view coming through turn two, and also Mark Dismore, the pole winner. Look at the view he has coming up tonight, starting number one. And Sam Schmidt will also be carrying one of our in onboard cameras, and that will be the number 99, the PC, the Sprint PCS cars. We look at Buddy Lazier. Now, Lazier will be wheeling the Coors Light Delta Fawcett Special, and he starts from the 24th position. Buddy Lazier and the rest of the field moving now through turn three as we prepare to go racing. And onboard now, Scott Sharp. We Sharp. We will have green flag racing coming up shortly here as the field. And Jeff Ward, you're looking at him at the bottom of your screen, the Yahoo machine, and he has been awfully tough, a second place finish in Indianapolis. Currently leading the Pep Boys Indy Racing League standings, and he has yet to win a career victory. And of course, the Scott Goodyear has one victory to his name so far this year. The field pulling away out of turn four. The honorary starts tonight, John Cronin, the Texas Attorney General with a green flag, and we go racing. The Longhorn 500 underway. First lap, Dismore stretches out his lead as he jumps in, Ari. I think it's Scott Goodyear in the lead right now. Uh, Scott Sharp, I'm sorry, took the lead. Actually jumped the start a little bit over his teammate, Mark Dismore. And I'm sure Mark wasn't too pleased about that. But hey, since he's a teammate, he's not going to really complain about it. But <laughs> if it would have been somebody else, he would have. Here's the look. There was the look when you're leading in the early going in the Longhorn 500. But the man that deserves the call is there's your one-two combination. See the yellow and red car? That is Greg Ray. And on the break, he turned the wick up. And he is closing in for that NASCAR-style draft by Mark Dismore. Jeff Ward has also moved up into fifth position from his starting position. And uh, Jeff is always an outstanding starter. Mark Dismore. And there's the challenger, Greg Ray. Greg Ray says that the way to initiate a pass here is to literally tuck the nose cone of your car up underneath the rear gearbox. Now, that will be the signal for us to see if Ray's going to try and make that pass on Dismore. Well, you have to be really close because there's not a lot of difference in speed. Like these front runners are all probably flat out right now. And flat out is flat out for everybody, so it's really difficult to pass. And as you can see, we've got a group of cars, five cars in front. Three laps now completed, and Jeff Ward in that Yahoo purple and white yellow car starting to climb his way through some traffic. Yeah, Ward's moving up close to the four guys in front, and uh, they're already drafting pretty good right now. And 
as you can see, the whole field is still pretty close after several laps. You know, the drivers tell me that they want to free the car up. We've talked about it in qualifying. We talked about it throughout the course of the race. What does that mean? Well, in Indianapolis, Ari, the difference between the ride height, between the ground and the side pod and the underwing that creates the downforce, you'd have to stuff about five credit cards to fill that area. Here, take those credit cards, put them in a fat wallet with pictures of your family, and you can actually slide that wallet underneath. You don't want as much downforce here. That's right. At Indianapolis, to free the car up, you take out wing. But in, uh, at these tracks, the wings are set. The IRL has set them at six degrees with a one-inch wicker. You can't do anything with the wings, so you can't free it up with that. So you start raising the right height of the car. Lead pack of five cars now. There's now, Ward. Yes, look at Ward looking to the outside now, trying to make a move. And Greg Ray trying to go into second, but uh, Dismore closes the door. And Ward is here getting a run on Tyce Carlson going into three. There he is, moving on the inside. A nice move, looking out the back of Dismore now. Greg Ray. That's the yellow car trailing from behind. Now in fourth place is Jeff Ward. Cheever has just moved past Tyce Carlson. The Pennzoil car. Scott Goodyear. And he's looking in his mirror, and that's a kind of what he sees. That's Kenny Breck in the power team car. This is the battle for fifth position. Tice Carlson is being posted in the fifth spot. He's in that white, red, and purple car. That purple and yellow car, that is Billy Bogey in sixth. And here comes Goodyear on the inside of Sam Schmidt. Goodyear in the yellow car, Schmidt in that black and white 99. Everybody's dicing back and forth, Ari. It looks almost like a sparring match. Basically, we've got 12 guys in the lead group. They're not very, very close, but they are close. Back up front, here's your race leaders. And Scott Sharp, he is first, followed closely by his teammate Mark Dismore. And on the outside, it's Jeff Ward thinking about making a pass. They're even, running two abreast now. Jeff Ward is pretty high coming off two and uh, going to tuck right in behind Greg Ray again. Penzoil telemetry, the speed 213 miles an hour for the Delphi machine. As we can see, he's actually getting out of the throttle right here. You, you can see. He's getting out, and now he's back to full throttle again. And don't forget, we've dropped the revs from 10,300 at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to 10,000. So you'll see it edge close, maybe 9,600, 9,800, but you don't want to get to 10, because then the IRL rev limiter kicks in, and that's disaster. Jeff Ward running low, the Yahoo machine there, trying to get around Greg Ray. 12 seconds now, covering the whole field. Some, some very competitive racing early on as we complete the 11th lap. Hey, fellas, start to watch the infinity with Eddie Cheever. Cheever in the 51, the children's beverage group special. He's running that infinity engine that he had in the lead at the Indianapolis 500 at about the 300-mile mark. How long is this race just tonight? About 300 miles. He's currently being shown in that fifth spot. There he is, that blue, red, and yellow stripe number 51. Started fifth, currently running in fifth place, Eddie Cheever. What's really good about the guys right out there right now, nobody's doing any foolish things. Everybody's kind of lining up behind each other. Because if you dare to go and try to make the pass, the guy on behind you can pick up his last off of the two cars and go right by you. Nice Carlson challenging Cheever now for fifth position. You know, you talk about this racetrack, 1.5 miles, 24 degree banks. What we're watching right now in this battle for fifth, Tice Carlson on the inside, Cheever on the outside, directly behind Cheever in that purple and yellow car, so close as they are. That's what this kind of racing's all about. You flat foot it, and you've got to be brave. Greg Ray says it's like being a gladiator in the 21st century. We're going to go 208 laps today, 195 left to go. We're thankful you're with us here tonight for some great racing. Scott Sharp is your leader. He has led from the start. I think a big thing tonight is going to be pit stops are going to be really crucial. The track position is almost everything right now. Because you can't... A guy running in 10th right now, he's not just going to go up to first that easy. I tell you what, watch the Yahoo machine, the purple and white car. He's been trying to hound Greg Ray in that yellow number two with the red side panels, the Menard Glidden machine. But he can't do too much, Ari, because if he has a miscue, Tice Carlson will go downstairs and get that position. And Tice in the beginning draw back a little bit, but come back strong. We're watching Jeff Ward there running a, a pretty high line there, Ari. I was kind of surprised he's getting up that high. And you can do it around this track. This is pretty much a two-groove uh, racetrack. Got some smoke coming from the 30 car. We'll watch the pits now as they go to work right now. 
racing back to the front of the pack. Tough break for Jimmy Kite. He decided he was going to come here with Dennis McCormick. And uh, that car, uh, one of the great things about young Kite out of Georgia is he proposed to his fiance on Carburation Day at Indianapolis in front of 100,000 people. All right, Scott Sharp is your race leader as they come to the start. And uh, 16 laps completed here on Fox Sports Net. We'll be right back. We're back at the Longhorn 500 and problems for Buddy Lazier. He got sideways coming out of the pits in turn one. The radio transmission from Lazier to his crew was the fact that he got into the back end of Robbie, and that could only be either Robbie Unser or Robbie McGee. A tough break for Lazier as all of the cars on the lead lap came down for service, even though we're a little early at lap 28. Lazier was running in 10th position. He had uh, climbed himself nicely through the field as the yellow's out. Now, let's watch the pit stop as they go to work right here. Jack, at the top is your race leader. In the middle is Dismore, who's in second, and Greg Ray in third. Ari, everybody thinks that at this point in time, a driver gets to rest, but he's pretty busy while his crew does this choreographed ballet. Oh, he has to be really careful. Let's keep the engine running, the keep his eye on the crew, make sure that when they finish, he can go. Yeah. Although they give That's him the signal, he still has to look out himself. Now, Greg Ray looked to me like he might have been just a little slow coming back up to speed. That could signal to me that maybe he's done a different gear selection. Here's Buddy Lazier going around under caution right into the back end of Robbie Unser. So we've discerned which Unser it was. And that really tells you that you always have to pay attention, even under a slow pace behind the pace car yellow. A lot of times you'll see guys run into and over each other during the yellow because it kind of... You know, the harmonica effect. Yeah. So here is your new leader, and it looks like That's it right. would be Steve Knapp in the ISM Delco Remy machine. But look at Greg Ray in 11th. Greg Ray lost out to Schmidt, Bismore, Ward, Cheever, Goodyear, Carlson, and Sharp in the pits. All right, we're under yellow at the Longhorn 500 after 30 laps, and we'll be back with more wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle. Hope you'll stay with us. Beachler has now gone from last to first. The Big Daddy's machine is hooked up. As we mentioned, he did not pit. He takes over the lead right now as we come around to the start-finish line, 35 laps complete. And Donnie Beachler has taken over the race lead. Unser is second. Let's go to Vince Wells for an update on a tire situation. Vince? Well, it's a problem right now. Teams with the Goodyears are struggling. Davey Hamilton, Billy Boat, Kenny Breck, Mark Dismore, Scott Sharp, they've all experienced problems with blisters on the right rear. I talked to the Kelly Racing Team. They said they're going to change... Uh, uh, tire pressure and hope that that relieves some of the problem but we'll keep an eye on it obviously a big story as this race is still in the early stages and that is a big story because all those guys want good your tires and uh, you have to believe that it's going to be a firestone one uh, race tonight uh, considering the problems that all those fast guys are having with their good years now here you're going to get a look fellas donnie beachler out front did not pit he's running on worn tires the fellow running behind him robbie unser didn't pit either but then directly behind them, Sharp, Cheever, Carlson, all of those fellas pitted, and already they've got brand new tires. Yeah, but they also have a lot of fuel, and those guys up front don't have that fuel in the car, so they're lighter. They should be a little bit quicker, but it's it's uh, it's really the fuel windows between 4, 40 and 48. These guys have to pit pretty soon. Well, don't forget they did have some caution laps, and you can go from 2.5 miles to the gallon to as much as 5 to 6 to 8 miles to the gallon, so that would move it to about lap 60 or so they could go. And just a short while ago, Buddy Lazier had some problems. Calvin Fish has an update. Well, Buddy has been struggling early. He also had uh, blistering problems on the right rear, and then when he was out there on track, he came together with Unser. They came in, changed the nose cones, so they did the complete change. They took the old one off, put the new one on, and he did go a lap down. Lazier running in 24th position. We look back up front where Donnie Beachler in the middle of traffic trying to hang along. And they, they touch wheels back there. The Pennzoil Panther machine for Scott Goodyear. You can see the kickback on the steering wheel when you go over. We say it's tabletop smooth, but it's a it's rough ride. It's pretty bumpy. It's pretty bumpy in between one and two, and also there's a bump in three and four these days. The man he's challenging on the inside. Now, that's the Yahoo machine number 21 of Jeff Ward, and that is a battle for position. And up front, the leader, there he is, Donnie Beachler, Kenny Breck trying to battle in there as well. Johnny Robbie Unser is battling Robbie. as well. Yeah, and Scott Sharp is third. Cheever in fourth. Cheever in fourth right now. Beachler. Running in 211 
11 miles an hour on this 1.5 mile racetrack. There you see that purple car, the new sponsorship of Paris on Billy Boat's machine, a three-year deal. I know A.J. Foyt's a happy, happy man. But I'll tell you, the man that's got to be happy right now is Larry Cahill with the Big Daddy's machine with young Donnie Beachler. He's only got 11 career starts, and this is just his second year in the IRL, and he is out front leading the Longhorn 500. That's pretty impressive. And Billy Boat is just doing everything he can to keep him behind because he wants to stay ahead of the fact in case he's in on the yellow. Tice Carlson and Greg Ray touched wheels earlier. You want to talk about close quarters racing? Hello! <laughs> that was amazing that they actually kept going. That Tice got a little squirty there, but the wheels almost were interlocked, and it was boy. You I thought you had to have fenders to do that. Well, you know, racing's rubbing in Texas, at least when they run the NASCAR cars here. Yeah, but you can't do that with these cars <laughs> because it will be lethal. <laughs> Billy Boats, he is doing everything he can just to hold off Donnie right there. He's going to make his car as wide as possible for the next couple of laps. Good Scott, Scott Goodyear and Robbie McGee. Goodyear going downstairs in the yellow Pennzoil car. This is the battle for seventh position. McGee, the rookie, rookie of the year at the Indy 500. And here we can get a look at just what the draft is like. He got out of throttle just a second. Not really. It was a, a case where the, the revs do drop as we look at the Pennzoil onboard telemetry. Yeah, it sounded like he did get out of the revs, but uh, let's just have a look here. See, he's out of the throttle a little bit, and uh, that just tells me that he's not really happy. But Scott Goodyear is also on Goodyear tires. We don't know what his situation is. 213 miles an hour. Beautiful evening for racing here in Texas. A crowd of 90,000 plus on hand tonight. Donnie Beachler is your leader. 45 laps completed so far. Beachler was the uh, Springfield track champion in sprint cars in 1993, and he's quite a character. Diminutive inside, but in size, but very loquacious. You engage him in a conversation, and he'll tell you everything you need to know about auto racing and about his life. What was that $10 uh, word you had there? Loquacious. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you later. Let's battle for the battle fourth for place. <laughs> Sharp is in fourth. Greg Ray is in fifth. Scott Sharp is having problems. Scott Sharp was really close to the guys up front there. Right now, Scott Sharp is falling back. The number eight car, as we see it, is getting in the way of traffic behind. He has a major problem, and I can expect Scott Sharp to come back in the pits here pretty soon. You would have to, you'd have to imagine, as we watch the Pennzoil telemetry, and looking at the vibration of the camera and listening to the engine, this man has got a problem. And generally, Ari, that kind of a vibration means? That could be a tire problem right there. Coming down now. They're watching okay. him come into the pits. The eight car Delphi after a frustrating Indy 500. He's listen. back in the pits here. Brand new engineer Will it's Moody, who is reunited, and all of a sudden the Delphi automotive team, their hopes and aspirations look as if they're diminishing quickly. Let's go down to Vince Welsh as Tice Carlson's in the pits. Vince. Tice Carlson was running so well early on, but they've developed a problem. There was some smoke coming out of the back, and now they've shut the car off. So uh, significant problems now for Tice Carlson as they let the car off the jack, and they're going to have to take off the rear cowling. Kenny Bragg is back in the pits. Yeah, both of A.J. Foyt's cars have been back to the pit area. Billy Boat was in. Now we watch what's happening now with Kenny Brack as their crew goes to work on that 14 machine. It looks like these guys are going to have to have a lot more pit stops than everybody else and change tires every 20 laps. And that's so frustrating for a driver because every time you the leader in the pits. Calvin Fish is there. Calvin? Donnie brings it to a stop. The crew led by Gilbert Lez. You'll be working on the right front. Go to work. This is going to cost them a lot of track position on the green flag conditions. It looks like a routine stop. And uh, no Billy problem. Boat. I believe there's a problem on the track, guys. Oh, Billy, Billy Boat spin. smoking, and now we've got a car spinning in the oil coming in on turn two. Billy Boat blew the engine coming out of turn four, smoked it all the way around to turn two. Another car got in the oil, got slippery, and kept it together, but Billy Boat. His day is done. There was Billy Boat actually spinning on his own oil. Almost. Well, there was another car right behind him, too, that, that, that got a little fishtail working, too. That will get your attention at 200 miles per hour plus. It did for Mark Dismore, but he did battle back, as we alluded to, and won the pole position. Boat won't have that opportunity. Gentlemen, look who is now leading the Longhorn 500.
Slugger. He told us at Indy that he would. Eddie Cheever in the children's beverage group number 51 is now leading, and he said with infinity power, we'll do it in Texas. 52 laps completed here at the Longhorn 500. We'll have more action coming your way here on Fox Sports Net. Stay with us. Pep Boys Indy Racing League activity here. The Longhorn 500 live from Fort Worth, Texas. And the car on the hook is Billy Boat's Machine as the engine cut loose on lap 54. And A.J. Foyt's uh, down there watching things develop here. And we're going to give you a little summary of where we stand so far. 54 laps completed uh, of 208 tonight. Eddie Cheever has taken over the lead. Ray is second to Jeff Ward third. And Robbie McGee, the rookie, has climbed up to third now. McGee shown in third after 54 laps. Sprint PCS and Sam Schmidt riding in the top 10. Robbie Yuns are up there as well. Step, step on Greg Waugh did not make the 500, now running in the top 10. MCI World Com car, number nine is Dismore, the full sitter. And John Hollinsworth, the PCSave.com light coast machine is the here. How about Jock Lazier making his first start? And Ronnie John Cox in the ADT security systems car for Tony Stewart and Larry Curry and Andy Card. They qualified in the top 10, and Ari, he's done a terrific job all weekend. He's done it. He's done a terrific job, and uh, as we said uh, before the show, that you know he qualified well, he ran well on his own. But tonight in traffic, it's a whole different deal, and you can see he's being really smart about it. Uh, he's not pushing his heart, his luck too hard. One of the things that Tony Stewart counseled John Cox about was the fact that take advantage of the final practice session, get out there find a couple of people to run in traffic and learn the draft. I talked to John Cox earlier this morning and he said that's precisely what he did. He said when you have a teacher like Tony Stewart, you don't get surprised at a place like Texas. Uh, it's great for any driver coming in new to have an experienced driver, you know, there in the pit to talk to him. Uh, I try to do that a little bit with Sam Smith, but obviously I'm quite busy <laughs> up here with you guys. But uh, Sam really likes to have me there. He says any information I get, any help I can get is, is, you know, is a bonus, is a plus. Well, stay tuned tonight to Fox Sports Net tonight at 10 o'clock when Keith Olbermann and Kevin Frazier bring you all of the day's scores, highlights, and breaking stories next on Fox Sports News Primetime. That's coming up later this evening after we watch the winner of the Longhorn 500. We're under yellow right now, lap 56. The reason for the yellow, a blown engine on Billy Boat's machine. A real frustrating night so far for A.J. Foyt Racing. But an equally successful night for Eddie Cheever Jr. A lot of people chuckled when Cheever said that he was going to get rid of the very successful Oldsmobile Aurora power plant that put him in victory lane in 1998 at the Indianapolis 500, put him in victory lane at Walt Disney World. But now he's with the Infinity Power, Ari, and uh, it seems to be coming together for him. It's working great for him, but, but look at A.J. Foyt. Two weeks ago in Indianapolis, first, third, and sixth. Tonight, he's not going to get much. Talk about the highs, the highs talk about and the, the lows, lows of racing, and that's just the way it goes. One weekend you're up there, the next weekend you're down. You can never rest on your laurels in racing. There's always something coming around quickly to surprise you and bite you. Vince Welch, how low is Billy Boat? Billy Boat discussing the situation here with the crew chief Craig Baranowski and Billy obviously a disappointing end. First uh, address the tire situation. You came in early, you and Kenny both had blistered tires. A lot of the Goodyear teams are struggling with that. Yeah, I mean, we tested here in, in, at night, and you know now we're running really in the daylight. It's a day race. I mean, it's it's bright as ever. Get into turn turn three back there, you know. Just I think just uh, just blistering tires. And then I thought I had another blistered tire, but probably what it was was the motor picking up a vibration, because after I pitted, it never picked the uh, picked the RPM back up, and then it broke something getting in the corner. I almost lost it, but you know it's disappointing to, for for our debut with Harris, but um. You know, I guess uh, we can only go up from here. It's Billy Boat, a disappointing finish. The defending champion at this race, he won't win it this year. And he had a good point about, you know, racing in the daytime, racing at night. Last year, we're coming down for a green with Eddie Cheever bringing Black them down right now. Did you see that move by Cheever? Black, Cheever got Black. out of the throttle, short track style, and startled second place Greg Ray into backing off equally, and then Cheever mashed the gas on the infinity. <laughs> yeah, it worked good for me in Indy last couple weeks ago, too. <laughs> Stretching his lead as they move to the back stretch right now. Eddie Cheever, the leader, Greg Ray second, and Robbie McGee, the rookie, trying to hold on to third. And there's Sam Schmidt having a great run in the Sprint PCS car. He's on the inside of Stefan Gregoire right there. Stefan Gregoire, Dick Simon Racing are trying something new here this evening. 
Next Mill, who is their sponsor, makes all the diapers and all of the heat shields that the teams in the IRL uses. They've had one developed for their shock absorbers and their spring combinations. According to Richie Simon, he says it will maintain a certain type of heat so we've got a similar performance between all sorts of temperature cycles. He says, we think that it'll help us a little bit better with this Gregoire Mexville car. Actually, uh, Sam Smith uh, lost two positions on that restart. But Battle. Greg Gray. Battling for the lead. He's looking to the outside of uh, Greg Ray, trying to make the move on Cheever. Two abreast now they run. Cheever says, I'm not going to give it up just yet. You know, side by side. you can run side by side like this for like lap after lap. I believe two years ago with Scott Sharp, he and I did that for like five laps in a row, and it's just unbelievable excitement. Ray's got him as they go into turn one. Greg. Oh, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. <laughs> He's not going to give it up, and they're going to just run like that for maybe five laps. It's so fun to watch these guys run on the high banks here in Texas. Two abreast through turn three. Here they They're come not giving up. Four. Who wants first? Just like two years ago. They guys, these guys are really stubborn. Stuart Stuart and Lazier did this two years ago, and here they, here we are again tonight. Yeah, and these two guys came together like this <laughs> at the One Mile Dover Speedway, the Concrete Speed Palace. But don't worry about it tonight, because as we said, Greg Ray in the Glidden Menard car says, "I like being a gladiator." See and what Greg Ray did? He dropped behind Chiba to pick up the draft again. Go side by side. There is no draft. 146 laps to go. You would think we were in the final five as we finish now the 63rd lap. Now, let me tell you one thing, though. Greg Ray has qualified on the front row for every race except this one. He finished 21st in last September's race here at Texas. At Walt Disney World, he finished 21st. At Phoenix, he finished 21st. At Indianapolis, he finished 21st. That might be good if you were going to Harris in Las Vegas, but not if you're in the Pep Boys Indy Racing League. He told me, he says, hey, didn't qualify in the front row. Maybe that'll turn things around and we can move off the 21 Schneid. Looks like he's going to get a great run coming off of turn two now. He's picking up the drag. He's getting closer and he's going. Eddie Chief has been doing a great job of blocking nicely. Did that rear wing get a little wide on the number 51? <laughs> you are allowed to make one move and one move only, and that's what Cheever has done in a very effective way. If I was Frank Hansowitz right now in Nissan Infinity, I would have my heart beating about three times the normal pace. No, because no. it's pretty good. He's going to have his beating with like five or six laps to go. Oh, okay. <laughs> the pace is picking up. Uh, Cheever's last lap, 211 miles an hour. Look at this. He got him. That, folks, and there's Robbie a McGee. slingshot. Is Robbie McGee going to make the move on Cheever? McGee is running the right same there. engine that they ran at the Indianapolis 500. They have not worked hard on trying to compensate for the drop from 10.3 to 10,005 RPM. Watch the onboard telemetry here, as we'll see what the effect is in the draft for the Pennzoil Panther car, Scott Goodyear. Right up on the rear deck lid of Eddie Cheever. Robbie McGee got, uh, got Eddie Cheever, and now he's going to try and chase down uh, Greg Ray. So the Indy 500 Rookie of the Year has moved into second place. If you look just one car up there, you'll see him. Robbie McGee in second place. And he has adapted really well. He's done so well. He surprised a lot of people. He surprised me. And uh, he's, he's just, I can't say enough about him running in second place. It's great. Let's go down to Vince Welch. He's got an update on Scott Sharp. Well, Scott Sharp is falling back for a very significant reason. It's the tires problem. They can't run the car hard because the tires are blistering, so they're forced to pull it back. One team member told me, if we keep it up at this pace, we won't have enough tires to finish the race. And I'll tell you something, Scott Sharp right now is probably, probably... That's the battle for third spot. Bat battle for second spot. Third place machine is Eddie Cheever in the blue, red, and yellow, number 51. He's on the inside of the Energizer Bunny and Robbie McGee. Right behind them is Scott Goodyear, and right behind Scott Goodyear is Sam Schmidt. After that slow restart, now joining the group again in front. Robbie McGee, the rookie, charging. He's not intimidated, not at all. Look at this. Look who, look at Goodyear making a move there. Sam Smith now Sam Smith. shuffling up there. He's in fifth right now. Sam Schmidt joined the group on the red limiter right here. See that green? That's full throttle. He just taps it for a second down at turn number one. He's getting a great run now off turn two, but yep. Hello. Good, you're in fourth. Will he give up fourth? Schmidt's going to go on the inside. Oh, he got it. Goodbye. 
Boy, drafting is so fun to watch here. You taught him that, right, Ari? No, Sam has been doing a great job out there, and uh, I really hope he is, he is a, a good night tonight. So far, it's going great. But what I was saying about Scott Sharp, he's running around there now. Basically, he's frightened. He's frightened that something might happen to his tire. Nothing he can do about it then. He'll be a passenger. And he's running around there really apprehensive. So the Delphi Automotive driver just soldiers on, Dave. That's exactly right. 72 laps complete. Greg Ray is your leader. Eddie Cheever second. Robbie McGee, the rookie, is third. Welcome back. Jim Rome has the last word on Fox Sports Net. Join us weeknights at 6.30 for the nightline of sports talk shows here on Fox Sports Net. And tonight we're watching right now the Longhorn 500K presented by MCI WorldCom. We're watching some serious battles on the track. Now the last word on Greg Ray is spelled traffic. Ray had extended his lead by some 2.8 seconds until he came into this gaggle of cars. The blue car directly in front of him, John Cox. The yellow and green car directly in front of John Cox is the FUBU machine, and that is Eliseo Salazar. Now, if we just hold for a second, you'll see that he's trying to slice across John Cox. He's got to make up time because his differential between himself and Eddie Cheever in second place has been cut in half as he goes through this traffic. Eddie Cheever's car slowing on the backstretch. Cheever slowing down on the backstretch. There he is. Problems for Eddie Cheever, who was running in second place his last time around 212. But obviously something has gone wrong here on lap 128 for Eddie Cheever. And that will move Sam Schmidt into second spot. Goodyear into third. And how about Stefan Gregoire? Gregoire with that narrow track, that shroud around there around their uh, uh, shock absorbers seems to be working let's go to vince welsh vince well one team member just told me that eddie cheever's out of fuel and that's why he was slowing in the back stretch so he's coasting his way in they're going to change his tires owen snyder told me this is one of the goodyear teams that is not having a tire problem but obviously they're losing valuable time with this uh with this mistake of the fuel and now cheever is in Owen Snyder changing the right front. They're refueling, obviously, and the tires are being changed again as they bring the tires over. No problems. The left front a little bit bald on one side, but it's been a good, clean stop for Cheever, and now the car has to be fired up. So a lengthy mistake for Cheever's uh, crew. We're not, as uh, up here, we're not sure, of course, if that would be a, a fuel problem or a tire problem. Problem. Robbie McGee having to get push started back after making what seemed to be a nominal stop. Here comes the leaders, guys, down on the pit road, and McGee is almost in front of his pit. That's right, and Greg Ray brings his car in. The race leader, problems to Robbie McGee. They're pulling his car back. Calvin Fish, what's up? Greg Ray brings it in. Robbie McGee's car was not in the way of Greg as he came into the pit stall. You see the crew going to work. This is one of the teams that are wearing the safety helmets for the crew. And the interest of safety is really not a mandatory issue right now, but the team's just trying to have the first time Charlotte. Good pit stop by the Menard team. 12.7 for Greg Ray in the Glidden Menard, number two. A nice stop. Remember, he had to take up 35 gallons of fuel. Who's there's the leader now, man, There's my man, Sam Schmidt, in the lead. And, and our team has been working on fuel mileage in Indianapolis especially. And uh, now he's on the way into the pits. And guys, look who's riding in second place now. Buddy Lazier, who was involved in a spin, is now in second. And now, check out what's his going brother. on. That's his brother, Jacques Lazier. Jacques Lazier, Lazier the rookie, and also uh, watching in the pit area. More pit stops. Here's Sam Schmidt, your leader. 80 mile an hour, the speed limit on pit road. You can hear he actually hit the button to keep it from going over. And let's look at these guys here, because these guys are really fast, uh, led by Skip Fall in the pits. There's Skip Fall right there. He's putting in some wing, because uh, uh, I saw that Sam was backing off, going off the throttle a little bit, going to turn three behind other cars, which meant he was pushing a little bit. Well, that's surprising that Fall made the adjustment before changing the tire. Well, Skip is so quick on the tire that he first wants to do that and then do the tire. There's your new leader, Jacques Lazier, out front, the rookie. Last time around, 211 miles an hour. Jeff Ward 
is uh, running there in the Yahoo machine. He is in second. Ward is in second. And Robbie the, Unser is third. This is the first ride for Jacques Lazier in the Team Trucelli Warner Brothers Store Special. It's an all-Colorado team. Now, you remember, Roberto Moreno used to drive that car, but I talked to Joe Trucelli about it. Moreno was hired as a driving coach. He gave us everything he had. In fact, stayed on until after Indianapolis. Now we got an all-Colorado team, and we're extremely excited. I would imagine Jacques Lazier very excited, running out front with 121 laps to go. The Longhorn 500, presented by MCI WorldCom. Kind of appropriate that these cartoon character that the Warner Brothers people adorned on the car, Pecos Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding out for Elmer Fudd. <laughs> Some good laps turned in by the rookie, 213. Yesterday, the warm-up gave an indication of Jacques, you know, he would be competitive tonight, and uh, he is. Jacques Lazier showed me a lot of maturity when he went into the field for the 83rd running in the Indy 500, and then proceeded to be bumped from the field. He maintained his poise, his positive direction, and said, hey, I was just in the greatest race in the history of anything, at least for a couple of hours. He said, I got a long time to go. And he has a great calm composure. He a little bit different than his brother. They both don't seem to get too excited about too many things. But once they're in the car, they uh, they are a different animal, like <laughs> most of us. Let's go down to Vince Welsh. Jacques Lazier's car owner, Joe Chiselli. You've had the magic touch. First it was Roberto Moreno, and now it's Jacques Lazier. Uh, how is the car handling? Are you having any problems with your Goodyear tires? Oh, the Goodyear tires are great. Are you kidding me? Uh, the car's handling fantastic. Uh, right now, Jacques just enjoying himself running around the track. This is fun, so... Uh, How about the poise that Lazier has shown? Uh, come back, I'm sorry? How about the poise that Jacques has shown? Oh, awesome. Incredible. I mean, he's just so calm and so relaxed. You know, you just wonder, you, every once in a while I have to ask him if he's still awake in there. <laughs> <laughs> We're proud of him. Jacques Lazier having a good run for Joe Tricelli. I'll tell you one guy that woke up real quick. Mark Pismore in the MCI World Cup car looked over and saw Lazier putting a lap on him. And I bet you that was a surprise. And there's uh, Greg Ray closing in a little bit on uh, on the uh, uh, Jacques Lazier, but Greg is a lap behind because of the pit stop situation. That's right. He's running in seventh position right now, Greg Ray. Here's where things can get a little confusing, gentlemen, because we cycle through under green flag pit stops. And because of the extended caution period we had, and because of the fact that you can get as much as 2.5 miles per gallon at speed, We've been able to move the window all the way up to maybe lap 100 or so. You're watching Pagan Racing entry right there. Ward, look at the, what he's done. He's battled up to second. But Jacques Lazier, the rookie, has the lead right now. We'll be back on Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to the Longhorn 500, presented by MCI WorldCom. And we have a problem on the racetrack. Jock, Jacques Lazier went into the pits as the race leader. But going out, he had a problem. Right there, exiting the pitch, you'll see the cones on the top hand of your screen. That's where the rev limiter will stop working. And he had too much throttle when it stopped working. And then all of a sudden, boom, all the power came in and he lost it on four tires. Talking about the rev limiter, you're talking about the button that keeps the car at a certain number of revs to stay under the posted speed limit of 80 miles an hour, correct? That's right. It will shut itself off as soon as he leaves the pits and he crossed those lines. And you depress the button? No. You don't use a button because the button you use just coming into the pit right. it will work for Slow -mo, you. We're going to show you the cones that Ari is talking about. There they were. And right there is where the speed limiter would shut off. He had too much throttle going. Mm -hmm. Got all that power all of a sudden on cold tires. And the car just veered to the left. And he hit that retaining wall that's there for protection of pit crew members. How disappointed can a young man like Jacques Lazier be after leading his first career Pep Boys Indy Racing League event? This is really the lowest of lows. Yeah, we see it all the time, guys. Guys, you lead, you're out, and uh, rookie mistake. All right, we've had 10 lead changes between eight drivers, and Jeff Ward is now the race leader. Let's go to Vince Welsh. Well, Joe Tricelli, we were just talking about how much poise Jacques Lazier had shown and what a great run it was, and just like that, he's in the wall. Hey, you know, he just, I can't say anything, but he did a great job. It looks to me like something mechanical happened to the car there. We're not sure. I'm going to have to assess it, look at the video, and, and see what happened. But, hey, we're proud of Jock. He did a great job. And we'll just have to come back next time and do it again. Had you communicated with him since?
since the incident? It looks like that they made him get out of the car, so I wasn't able to talk to him. And the car's not going to be able to uh, put a front wing on it because it went over the wall, is that right? Exactly. Yeah, we need to be safe. That's Joe Trusselli. The uh, day is done for Jacques Lazier, unfortunately. Now, how about this, fellas? We are now completing lap number 99, and the leader of the race is Jeff Ward. But this car, shot with Firestone tires, will receive $10,000 as the highest running Firestone car at the 99th lap. That's to celebrate Firestone's 99th anniversary building tires here in the United States. Start at 12th, and currently in second place. Again, the leader is Jeff Ward. Now, Robbie Unser has a new crew chief or an engineer for the last couple of races named John King, who was at the controls of Kenny Brack's run to the championship. He told me a secret about Robbie Unser. He said, Robbie, because he's a two-footed driver using his left foot for the brake, has a tendency on high-speed ovals to rest his left foot literally on the brake pedal. And he said, sometimes what they've got to do is try and put a bigger spring <laughs> so he doesn't engage that brake. It's, it's really frustrated the team in the Petro Mali operation. That's, that's not a good thing to do on these kinds of tracks where you don't use the brakes at all, or like Indianapolis where you don't use them. Looks like Robbie may be coming down on the pit road, but you know one thing, you can't lie about it because the telemetry will show it. Right, and, and Robbie will scold you. And Robbie was one of those guys that had a different pit stop sequence, and now he's coming in behind Jeff Ward. Jeff Ward now bringing it into the pit area. Calvin Fish is standing by to call that for us. Calvin. Well, the leader in the championship brings it in. He's hoping to extend his string of three podiums so far this season. Uh, Crew is going to be ready for a new sponsorship on this car for this weekend. Yahoo. And uh, also, what are you saying? That when he was running in the draft in practice, he was really getting excellent mileage. It's going to be interesting to see at the end of this event who throws the dice, just as Steve Menard did it in the... It's Walsh. Johnny Unser, Robbie Unser is in the pits. They changed all four tires. They did not make a single adjustment to the car. They love the way his car is handling. He's out of the pits cleanly. The Firestone tires are holding up very well. All right, thank you, Vince. We're closing in on the halfway mark of the Longhorn 500. 208 laps is what we're headed for here tonight. 100 laps complete. So we'll take a commercial break. Jeff Ward, the race leader. Unzer is second. Donnie Beachler running third. And Ray is now fourth. You're watching this Fox Sportsnet presentation of the Longhorn 500. And after the yellows, look at this. Greg Ray is back up front. And Goodyear is second. Jeff Ward has fallen to third. Let's go to Calvin Fish. Well, a problem with Jeff Ward's car. When he came in, they did the wheel change. They looked inside the right rear. You can see the fluid in here. They're hoping it's not brake fluid. I spoke to Mitch Davis. He's pretty sure it's just grease from the upright. They're going to leave him out. But look for any problems from the right rear on the number 21 machine. Boy, I don't know if they're going to tell him that on the radio because that doesn't uh, make you feel real comfortable knowing that you have all that stuff on the inside of your wheel. We're getting ready for a restart here. Base car pulls back into the pit area, Black and control. here we go. The restart Black, on lap green, 103. Black. Restart. Now, those cars directly in the screen right there, they are lapped machines. They're the tail end of laps. Your leader. We've got a car spinning. Okay, it's all on the it's main the trailer. rookie spinning. John that Cox. is Ronnie John Cox, and he got airborne. He got some air like a motor motocross rider would, but landed back on all four and wheels. Car seven, call Brian. Do you see that mark right there? That is what we call a wheel donut. So obviously, he made contact with another driver. And as far as as far as what I can see is that uh, Sam Smith might have gotten his lap back. So on the restart, there you see some uh, war damage on Eddie Cheevers inside of his car, too. If you connect the dots, I bet you maybe they were the two that made contact. We'll have to wait and see. But the ADT car for Ronnie John Cox and uh, Tony Stewart's protege in Tony Stewart's own machine makes his way back to pit road. But now they're going to have to turn him around because he's pointed in the wrong direction. That's not a good thing. Not a good thing. Let's go to Calvin Fish. Well, the team are trying to turn him around. A big tire mark on the right side uh, side part of the car. Larry Curry said he wasn't sure what was happening there. He saw uh, Ronnie give a big stare to his crew chief as they made the turn around. He's obviously concerned about if there's any other damage to the car. It looks okay other than the tire rub, but they're going to do a tire change and try and get him back into the action. So four tire change for Ronnie John Cox. We think we have found the culprit. The two men that have come connected. Now watch on this replay. Let's stop it right here just for a second. Stop it, please. This is Eddie Cheever, and this is Ronnie John Cox. Now roll it. 
They come closer and closer, exiting the corner. Now stop it here. That's what happens when you connect tire to tire, side pod to side pod. That was clearly a situation where Ronnie could have seen him come down because Eddie was a little slow there and the spotter could have helped him in that uh, instance as well. You see the effects of the grass, folks? The grass, John Cox was sliding along very nicely. Then he hit the pavement from the Legends track here and he got some big air underneath that ADT uh, security special. Yeah. Who said that white guys can't jump, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to tell you there's some good news for you, Ari. Your, your teammate, Sam Schmidt, is back on the lead lap after that uh, series of yellows. Yep. Along with the Stefan Gregoire, he runs in seventh. There's the Sprint PCS machine. Let's go to Vince Welsh. One driver that has not had a problem today has been Scott Goodyear. His team is very happy with the car. Uh, crew chief Kevin Blanche told me before the race they had a philosophy to go to the front and run hard all night long. They said, he told Scott Goodyear, he said, Scott, you get us five positions and we'll get you three positions in the pits. That'll take him from the eighth starting position to number one. Right now, he sits second on the grid. Now there is John Barnes, one of the co-owners of the Pennzoil Panther machine. I remember in qualifying, I asked Kevin Blanche what happened because obviously Scott Goodyear was disappointed in his qualifying back, effort. He said, fans. we threw everything Don't we could him, think buddy. of at the car and the car yeah. didn't like it. And by the time Goodyear got back in, I found out he didn't like it remember either. Atlanta, yeah, buddy. He didn't like remember it at all. Atlanta. But uh, hey, positive thinking is a great thing. And uh, it's it. Sam Smith is coming back in the pit. I think this is a strategic move. Well, take a look at it. 106 laps have been completed. If we're taking a look at some extended cautions, you could literally do this race in one more stop. Exactly. Good There's move. One more yellow out on the racetrack tonight, then he's got enough fuel to just do one more pit stop. You were talking about the drafting and how you can really save fuel mileage. You compared it to riding behind like you're on the highway and you're behind a truck, right, Ari? Right? That's right. I mean, once I almost ran out of gas on the highway, so I just slotted in behind the a truck and, and went half throttle the whole way had the truck suck me uh, down the highway and I saved a lot of fuel like that and that's what happens when you're in the drive. See Greg Ray getting ready to restart he's going cha-ching cha-ching because <laughs> he just received ten thousand dollars from Delphi Automotive leading the 104th circuit here in the Longhorn 500. Look at him crawling through turn three here as we prepare for the restart going awfully slow and the fans. Then he guns it. 90,000 plus come to their feet for the restart here on lap 107. Green flag. Did you see how he got sideways and immediately Scott Goodyear's got a jump on him. Here's Goodyear challenging on the outside for first place. Scott Goodyear finished fourth last year. He's going to go wheel to wheel with him. Uh, I think he's going to kind of ride it out together like that. But there's a guy on the inside. We're going to go three Jeff abreast. Moore, the Yahoo machine tries to make it three abreast. There's Billy, Kenny Bragg coming around him again. The red car directly in front of this lead tandem is the Buzz Calkins machine. He's got to be holding his breath, Ari, trying to just get out of the way. Well, he's got to stay on the throttle. He cannot let lift out of the throttle with that many cars behind him because then they will check uh, the closing rate will be too big. Kenny Bragg sticking his nose into the activity now. Raise your leader up front there. Goodyear. Goodyear and Beechler. Beechler battling now. This is for position. Scott Goodyear, Beachler right there, and right behind them is uh, Jeff Ward. Beachler riding in third position. Goodyear is in second. 109 laps completed. Ari, I'll tell you what that restart My tells me. Man. Greg Still Ray in the Menard car has a different gear selection. It may be one of those teams carrying four high gears. It causes a problem on a restart. Donnie Beachler, by the way, just jumped into second. Looking out the back of the Pennzoil Panther, and all he sees is the Yahoo machine from Pagan Racing and Jeff Ward. Ward, as we've told you, the current Pep Boys Indy Racing League points leader, but he has yet to score a victory. Seven-time motocross champion. He has become quite a terror on four wheels. And he got a great run there on uh, Scott Goodyear, and let's look at... Uh... Jeff Ward in a minute, because I think he's going to make a move on uh, Scott Goodyear in a minute. Jeff Ward shows incredible patience in four wheels. As we watch Wardy working to the You're high clear. side of the Pennzoil Panther car of Scott Goodyear. I think that comes from running in those motocrosses where you have to maintain a certain level for 20, 30, sometimes even 45 minutes. That's difficult on two wheels, and I think it serves him well in a Pep Boys Indy Racing League competition. There's a car smoking out there. There he goes by us. 
if you and it's Jeff Ward. It's Jeff from Ward. Jeff Ward's car smoking as he goes into Bunch turn one. Ward, Bunch slow down. down. Boy, every he has a flat tire. We're, we're told Jeff Ward in car 21, who was battling for third position, right out on the backside, the right rear, that tire right there. The report is that it has got a leak, that it is going down. So he's got a faulty Goodyear on the right side, and that's going to bring him out of pit road. And he notices it, but the crew can actually see the tire go down. They have telemetry telling them what the pressures are. And a lot of times the driver... Look at this. Three wide going into the corner. Oof. Aren't you glad you're retired? <laughs> no, I mean, this is so much fun. Uh, this is a lot of fun here. This track has been a great race track to race on. He's there, he's there. Beesler and Goodyear battling for second place right now. Clear, Goodyear Scotty. holding on. Beesler's thinking about going on the high side. Here is... Let's check in with Calvin Trish with Jeff Ward. Trish goes to work on Wardy's car. They're looking seriously at the right rear. because they Remember, they did have some fluid leak in there, and they are going to work. Obviously, not a tire problem right now. They've got the, some uh, towels over there, and they're looking at the rear suspension. Mitch, right, Mitch uh, Davis believes it was an upright problem. They're not going to put the tire back on to try and get him back up. They're losing valuable time right now. Calvin, you were on top of that when they pulled that last set of tires off, and they saw that grease, so obviously... It's an ongoing problem. As we look at the Pennzoil Panther yellow car out the backside, you look at Donnie Beachler. This is classic Pep Boys Indy Racing League competition. Pennzoil Panther, Go get him, Gary Pettigo, and, and Scott Goodyear, a very well heeled team. <laughs> On the other case, the 98 car of Donnie Beachler, hey, they're a low bucks team, but they are battling for second position in a million dollar race this after this evening at texas motor speedway that to me is what racing's all about that's the beauty about the IRL, about the rules package you can buy everything else that everybody else buys and at this track this track doesn't require development as much maybe some wind tunnel work will help to reduce the drag but you could run a car here competitively without doing a lot of testing and uh, jeff ward is back in the pits and i know <laughs> he doesn't want to be back in that car the guys from Panther Penzo are having a good time as Goodyear rides in second position right now. Vince Welsh has an update. Kevin Blanche told me you want to qualify on the bottom of the racetrack because it's the shortest distance, but you want to race on the top of the racetrack. You're scrubbing less revs, so you'll see Scott Goodyear spend a lot of time around the top if he can. He just as soon make his moves around the top of the racetrack instead of down under. They're having a little bit of a problem on the restart, but once they get their tires warmed up, the car is nearly perfect. Look for Scott Goodyear to be a player in this one down the stretch. You see that yellow car directly in front of Scott Goodyear in the Pennzoil Panther pack? That's your leader. It's less than one-tenth of a second separating first and second. Let's go to Calvin Fish and update on Jeff Ward. They're still working on Wardy's car. They believe they've got a suspension breakage. He did have a problem at the non-event at Charlotte with a rear, uh, roll bar coming loose, and they think it may be something similar. They've got the car in the air right now, and they're going to give it a thorough looking over before they send him back out again. And we're watching the challenge now. Goodyear thinking about making a move for the first position after finishing fourth at Texas in 97 and 98. It's going to happen. He's on the move. It's going to happen. It's not going to take long. And Greg Ray is getting the signal from his spotter that he's down low and he's giving him room. At the race last year, Scott Goodyear got aboard his Pennzoil Panther machine and three laps into the race, they knew they had chosen the wrong gear. Kevin Blanche told me they were not going to encounter that problem again tonight. They really worked hard at having a good gear selection. The difference between maybe the, the top four gears, all right, what, 75 RPM, 50 RPM? That's how close you got to cut it nowadays at 10,000 RPM, the maximum allowable revs. We used to have the split between 5th and 6th, 150 revs, but these days, these days, it's anywhere from 75 to 100 revs because the revs, you want to you wanna keep that engine as close as 10 all the time. Back on board with Panther Penzoil Racing. Goodyear won at Phoenix earlier this year, looking to the inside. I heard Goodyear. He was up on the limiter one more time. Now, as he comes out of this turn four area, let's listen as he goes into one. For him to make the pass, he needs to be able to stay flat out going into tune. He cannot do that. He should be, he could make his car a little better. Once he can stay flat out going into the turn behind the guy, then he's going to pass him. You said turn three is the fastest part of the racetrack but you see how much he has to lift anytime he lifts he's going to go away from him greg ray will go away from him and it's really hard to pass him if you have to lift 
I remember well because two years ago when I was driving here, I had to go absolutely flat out behind Tony Stewart in the turn to be able to make the pass on the back straight. All right, we're watching Scott Goodyear being patient now, watching Greg Ray. We have a great battle. It's going to go down to the wire. The Longhorn 500. Stay with us on Fox Sports Net. I'm telling you, folks, you need to pull up a chair and watch this race. This is incredible racing. You're watching the Pep Boys Indy Racing League activity, the Longhorn 500, and the battle is up front right now. Greg Ray, that Menard car is number two, followed by the Panther Pinzol machine in second place, and he is tracking him down. Pull up a chair. The 90,000 that are here at the Texas Motor Speedway haven't sat down. Neither have we up here in the booth. This has been incredible racing between Ray and Goodyear. To me, it appears that Scott Goodyear really has the fastest car because he comes up and runs up, and on, up on him pretty good. He just can't really make the pass, and he had a pass earlier in traffic, but then Ray got by because Scott Goodyear had got held up by traffic as well, so traffic is a key. Butch Meyer is the engine man for Team Menard. He told me that they did some work on their engines for, to compensate for the reduction from 10 3 to 10,000. I said, where did you look for the increase in horsepower? He said, we didn't. But what we tried to do is have a little bit more on the low end, down at about 9,500. Three laps to go, Scott. Three laps to go. Now, three laps to go. That's a signal that it looks like Goodyear may be pitting. So now, what do you do, Art? Do you try and pass before you pit, or you just stay content right there? Well, depending on the fuel mileage, sometimes, like, when they're coming up on traffic like that, it's better to go in the pit one lap early because you're losing so much time in traffic. Don't want to be held up. If Goodyear comes in now, for instance, and Greg Ray stays out two laps, Goodyear might beat him out of the pits because Ray was held up at traffic for a couple of laps. Look into the inside here. No one right, go. 74 up, laps to go. That was not the cleanest coming down on you uh, that uh, Greg Ray did there on Scott Goodyear. That's he's going to get him now. He's going to get him now because he's got to run on him. But he's got nowhere to go. There's a uh, roadblock. And that is Steve Knapp. That is Knapp in the Delco Remy car on the outside in the white and black car. Dipping to the inside was Greg Ray. And Goodyear couldn't initiate the pass until he got halfway down the back stretch. You know, He's coming to the pits, that's why. Okay, boys, let's go get him. Greg Ray's guys are coming in next lap. Let's give him the lead here. There's the pep talk from Kevin Blanche. And we're going to watch him go to work as we watch... Kevin is a great guy to listen to on the radio. Very motivated. You know, sometimes we think we need to give him some... Uh... Tires and fuel only! Tires and fuel only! Let's go to Vince Welch, Vince. You heard Kevin Blanche say it. Tires and fuel only. They'll make no chassis adjustments with this car because it's running nearly perfect. Here comes Goodyear. He's got a perfect stop as Jim Harbaugh, the San Diego Chargers quarterback and one of the owners of this team, works the pit for Goodyear. They did make a front wing adjustment after all, and now Goodyear is waiting, waiting. The car is down, and away he goes. A very strong stop for the Panther Panzoil team, and Panther Panzoil team. And remember, Kevin Blanche said, "You get us five positions on the track, we'll get you positions in the pits to win it." All right, we're watching on the track now. Is Greg Ray will also come into the pits now? Greg Ray in the two car coming into the pit area. 80 mile an hour speed limit. Calvin Fish is standing by. Team Menard, their crew ready to service. Greg Ray. Oh, Calvin, oh, 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 Greg, oh, oh, oh. Greg Ray holds it in. I just looked at Tom Knapp, the crew chief. He said that they're very surprised at the speed of Scott Goodyear in traffic. Yep. They feel they have a very fast race car. The Firestones are perfect. They said no blistering problems. Oh, Excellent oh, 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 oh. Ray, good stop. Identical stops for Greg Ray and for Goodyear. Who's the leader? Big Daddy, Donnie <laughs> Beachler. Donnie Beachler takes over the, the lead of the race. 139 laps completed now. Beachler in first. Unzer, Robbie Unzer is second. Sam Schmidt in third. Time to cycle through, though. Now, Beachler should be coming onto pit road as well. We'll look for him, but still, this has got to be a thrill. He led his first career IRL event back at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. But Beachler out of Springfield, Illinois, having a great run this evening. I think Scott Goodyear had a better pit selection than Greg Ray had. And I think, therefore, but here we are. Greg Ray's in first. And Scott Goodyear is getting a run on him, going on the outside. He's got the lead. And we don't have it on screen, but Scott Goodyear just passed Greg Ray for position. It's essentially will give us a little 
eventually give him the lead. That's what I like about you race drivers. You're already proactive. <laughs> Knowing that Beachler has to still come on the pit road. Can't ever keep up with Lion Beck. I'm That's looking forward to when he's you, fully retired. Exactly. That's the information we get on the radio. When I'm out there racing the guy, I know that some guys still have to come in. We don't worry about them. We worry about the guy that has already been in. Stefan Gregoire, we're going to go on board with him. He's running in fourth position. Stefan Gregoire having a solid day. That's the Mexmill car we told you about, the special shrouds that uh, the Richie Simon, Dick Simon operation are running. Gregoire is one guy that Dick Simon always sets a goal for. So far, he has met every goal that Dick Simon has posted for him. You know what the goal is tonight? He said, all right, Stefan, top five finish. Where is he running right now? Fourth. Keeping the boss happy, that's what it's all about. Ahead of him is John Hollingsworth, who is running pretty good tonight. He's in eighth position. Take a look at how he's progressed through the field, 13th, 6th, then in the pit exchanges, back to 12th, but he is solidly in that fourth position. And for the first time in 28 years, we didn't have a Dick Simon car in the 83rd running in the Indy 500. It's great to have Greg Waugh, Simon, Dick, and, and Richie back here in the hunt and doing so well. And here in the state of Texas, you're watching PC Save car there on the right. That's a Texan. Hollingsworth running in eighth position, just passed there by Greg Wall. Did you see how steady Greg Wall was? He didn't panic as he pulled up on, on, on Hollingsworth. He just backed out of the throttle, cracked it for a minute, tapped the brake, didn't get the car upset at all, and then initiated and completed the pass. Max Mill car with a strong showing tonight. The guy who's having a strong run, running in fifth position, is uh, LSAO Salazar. Salazar battling. Still watching and waiting for the leader. You know, Ari Leondike has told you folks that uh, it looks like Goodyear and Ray will eventually cycle to the front. But hey, listen, right now, Buddy Lazier is looking ahead and seeing All right, here Tommy Beachler. Greg Ray, oh, there. Scott Goodyear. This is the fight, really the essential fight for the lead. Right Violet ahead of them. Sixth and seventh, but right now they're going to eventually cycle through, right? Right in front of them is Schmidt, who's in third place, but he had that different pit stop strategy. He stretched his fuel a little bit longer. Behind the two. He's out of sequence with these two guys. Johnny Beachler is actually the race leader right now, but he will eventually have to come in for a pit stop for more fuel. Lap 146 of a scheduled 208. Oh. Greg Ray. Sam Smith almost moves up into Greg Ray, who just had passed Scott Goodyear. I'm going to root for Johnny Beachler and tell you, what happens if the yellow comes out right now? All of a sudden, all that cycling through would change, and Johnny Beachler would be solidly in that front position. There's the pinzoil machine looking, and here comes Donnie Beachler. He will make a pit stop. The big Danny's machine will come in, so we'll watch this rookie go to work and let his crew go to work in the pit area. All right, Lion Dyke, again, you're right. <laughs> Let's go to Calvin Fish. Jill yeah, Belez weighs him into his pit stall. They are going to do tires only, try and maintain some kind of track position. He would have to go 61 laps on this final stint. That is not possible. A lot of the guys felt they could get to the mid-50s in the draft, sort of backpedaling a little bit on the throttle, but this is too far to go. He will need a yellow to try and make it without another stop, guys. Well, he's going to get a yellow right now. John Hollinsworth Jr.'s machine. Lots of smoke coming out of there. Let's not be premature because Hollinsworth was well down out of the racing group below the apron. No yellow flag They will keep displayed. the green. The green stays on. Very professional to keep that track green because he stayed out of the groove. He just stayed on the bottom of the track. And the Petro Molly car, that silver and red car, directly behind that triangle, is making a pass to the outside of Mark Dismore. That's your new leader, young Robbie Unser, a second generation driver, and has moved into the lead here. Don't forget, Unser finished second here in Texas before, so he likes this track. I know he likes these kind of tracks. Robbie over and over again, he loves the one and a half miles. Sam Schmidt in second, and Stefan Gregoire has pumped his way all the way up to third. Salazar running in fourth. Robbie Unser is one of the cars that their engineer and their crew chief decided we're going to try and take as much downforce out as possible. You hear us all the time talking about the under tray, the under wing. It's an upside down wing. The faster you go, the harder it's planted down to the ground. Well, at a track like this where you have the banking, you dial as much out of it as possible. And they said, we just take as much as we can out of the car before Robbie complains. And the car's running awfully free right now. 56 laps to go. Salazar into the pit area. He was running in fourth. 
One of his better showings this year. Salazar received quite an honor at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, selected the Scott Brayton Award winner, the soft-spoken, mild-mannered Chilean, who had all those injuries and said he only battled back because of the thousands of cars clear, that he Scott, got you're from clear. his friends. Well, look who's battling once again. Goodyear and Greg Ray. They have been battling all afternoon. Goodyear now battling his way. And up front, though, Sam Schmidt has taken over the lead. Sam Schmidt has taken over the lead. He has, but in my opinion, this is the battle for the lead right here. These two guys just passed Sam Schmidt, who is on the lead lap, but he's out of sequence with his pistols. This is the race for the lead right here, what we're looking at. Let's go to Vince Welsh, Vince. Robbie Unser in the pits. They make a slight wing adjustment in the front. It's one of the very few adjustments they've had to make. Otherwise, it's just tire and fuel for Robbie Unser. A very clean stop for the Petromale Racing Team. Looking out of the back of the Pennzoil car, uh, Scott Goodyear. Scott Goodyear. We've got a crash on the track. It's Unzer. No, Unzer. no, he did not have a crash. Yellow, the the car, wheel was not put on correct. Car. Hold that he just car. came Hold out that. of the pit. The wheel wasn't attached properly, and it flew off the race car. Good call by Ari Leyendijk, two-time Indy 500 winner on shame. the call right there. That is a shame. He had a solid run going. Now, this Ari is going to damage his car. He probably cannot continue because it might wear down the bolts keeping the suspension together. Ari, as you know, these tires and these wheels are attached in a different way. Let's check in with Vince Welch. I'm with John King. John, what happened? Uh, I guess we let him go too soon. We had a wheel left loose. The car was running so well. You were up in the front and it was charging. Is this the just trying to get him out too quickly? I think that uh, he cut that interview short because he has to go to work right here. Yeah. Here comes the machine back to the pit area minus the tire. That's a tough job driving that thing with three. As I was going to say, the, the, unlike a passenger car, these wheels have one center lug. It locks on the tire. That's why the crew has to shift the tire around a little bit. Then there's one giant lug, lug nut that goes on. If you don't fully attach it, you can vibrate real loose and the tire will just go, wheel, go wheeling away. I hope they check this. Where I could not see that on the screen, but uh, I also see that the Sprint PCS crew is getting ready for Sam Schmidt, and this, this is going to be his last pit stop. And he might be able to be able to do it under yellow here. With uh, we're closing in on the final laps, 156 completed of a scheduled 208, and Sam Schmidt is your race leader. We'll be back with more here on Fox Sports Net. Now let's take a look at the race summary now. 161 laps completed in the summary. And this was early on. Billy Boat blows an engine, gets sideways, and did a pretty decent job saving it. And then Jacques Lazier, when he was leading the race, makes contact with the wall. He didn't save it. We're touching wheels out there. Cheever and John Cox, the rookie out there. And then this is just a great open wheel racing tonight the here pass in Texas. For the lead, right. 12-second pit stop for Goodyear, chasing his second win this year, and then Greg Ray doing the same thing. 12-second pit stop for Team Menard in the Glidden entry. And yes, sir, we're all pumped up for the finish. 161 laps complete, and the green comes back out at Texas. So let's keep an eye on our leader, Sam Schmidt, on the inside of Kenny Bragg. Gets past Kenny Bragg. Riding board down. A lot of traffic up ahead. Great run going down the back straight. Trying to go Carlson by Tyson there. Carlson. Should we dance? <laughs> <laughs> Through turn three. A little twitchy there for it's a It's just a little bump there. and got a little bit of kickback in the steering wheel. Not a problem at all. But this guy on the right has given him a lot of room. That's Robbie That's Unser. You call that a lot of room? But now he's going to... There you go. It's quite busy out there, and you cannot just keep your foot in. You've got to analyze the situation very quickly. Everybody gets excited when they see him go three or four wide at Daytona or Talladega with fenders. I really get excited when I see him do it with no fenders. Scott Goodyear is on a roll, getting really close to Sam Schmidt now. Yeah, let's watch him now. This is says Sam Schmidt and Goodyear closing in on him. Goodyear in the yellow car to the outside of Sam Schmidt. There's the battle you want to watch right there. Working some heavy race traffic. And he's going to get him for first place. Scott Goodyear got held up pretty good, though. It's quite possible that Sam is going to come back on the inside. And there he is. Side by side. Here they are, your race leaders. The yellow car. That's Goodyear trying to move to the front of the Pinzoil clear, machine as clear. they move into two. And he's got him. He's not, it's not over yet. 
Here's Greg Ray. Greg Ray becoming a player once again. There. Greg Ray had the door slammed on him halfway down the backstretch, but he kept the momentum up and accomplished the pass by Sam Schmidt. Try on the high side now, the silver and red Robbie Unser Petro Molly machine. Greg Ray not as effective in traffic as Scott Goodyear has been. Scott Goodyear looks to me as he's the strongest guy out there right now. But things can change. Tires can go away. The car might Clear, be good on, a, on a lighter, lighter fuel, loaded fuel. And we still have uh, 44 plus 8 laps to go. Bobby Unser doesn't seem any of the worse for wear. He's still running very well. But uh, one go. Whoa, whoa, cutting the grass good. down there. Nice call. Nice Carlson using the grass and keeps it together. I think that was a, an action to avoid something rather than trying to pass in the grass. Let's go down to Vince Welsh. He's with Jacques Lazier. Well, we saw a replay of Jacques' incident in the pits a little while ago. Jacques, explain what happened. Uh, you know, first of all, I feel real bad for Warner Brothers Studio Store and EDSS and the whole Tercelli team racing. I mean, they gave me just an awesome car. You know, we had problems with our clutch, and we had to pump start the car, and we're just trying to get it going, and then actually right at the end of pit lane, it hit and hit hard, and I just couldn't couldn't grab it in time when we just spun and just nicked the wall enough to put us out for the day. See you in Colorado? Oh, we're definitely going to be in Colorado. That's Jacques Lazier. And the battle on the track is for first place. Goodyear running in first place. 169 laps completed of 208 tonight. Greg Ray. That's him on the outside. And then whoa, whoa, whoa. traffic. Three wide down into the corner again. And Ari, you got a little excited because it was reminiscent of Indy. No, because I thought they were going to hit each other and start <laughs> flying around there. But <laughs> glad that didn't happen. No car on the inside is your leader, Scott Goodyear. Your buddy Lazier on the high side of the purple Possible car. Way to keep your is foot this in NASCAR? It. No, it's the Pep Boys Indy Racing League. Nine different leaders tonight. Nine different leaders. The Scott is showing a lot of muscle here. He's quite aggressive. And he has to be aggressive with that, not strapped. Good job, good job. Hey, fellas, look at, at the line. Look at the speeds. 210 for your leader, but how about Sam Schmidt? Last time by, with the help of the draft, three miles an hour faster than your leader. Your third place machine, Herr Schmidt, is on the move. That's right, but Sam Schmidt has actually dropped back compared to the leader a little bit. Race traffic accounts for that. And here's Sam right here going into turn four. 213 miles an hour. I thought the sun might have been a problem coming out of turn four for the drivers tonight, but it doesn't seem to be that bright and in, into their eyes. This crowd has been treated to an incredible yes. race this evening. Would have to be counted as maybe the second biggest crowd that the Pep Boys Indy Racing League has played in front of. The other one, how about 400,000 just 11 days ago? <laughs> and I tell you, they've been on their feet all night long. We hope you'll stay with us for this dramatic finish. Goodyear has a lead, but Greg Ray is challenging. We'll be back. We're in the final stages of the Longhorn 500 as Scott Goodyear continues to lead in the Panther Pinzoil machine. Greg Ray right there in second place. Sam Schmidt running in third. Now join us here on Fox Sports Net tomorrow night at 9 o'clock for Going Deep. Chris Myers hosts the show that critics call the 60 Minutes of Sports Television here on Fox Sports Net. And we have a crash. Thais Carlson has crashed on the course. Right in front of the signaling pit. Now, normally that would be on the front straightaway, but here in the NASCAR-type super speedways, they position the signaling pit down the backstretch. What a disappointment for slim and trim and very aggressive Thais Carlson. Best qualifying effort was in the hunt most of the evening. The Blueprint MP boys have got to be disappointed with this. 28 laps from the finish. Tice Carlson in the wall. And uh, what, a, what a run he's had here this week. Qualifying third, as you mentioned. And, and it is a shame to see his race come to end this way. Crashed to turn two and ended up in the middle of the back straightaway. So the yellow comes out now. And again, let's give you the top five. Scott Goodyear is first. Greg Ray second. Sam Schmidt is third. Stefan Gregoire is fourth. And Donnie Beachler now in fifth. Now, not to rush to a restart, but remember when we saw the restart before and it was the opposite way with Goodyear in second? And there's Carlson being led to the mandatory checkup at the infield hospital. And uh, things have changed now, and we're going to have to see who has the best. Now, let's take a look. Here's the pace car coming out. And right in front of him is where the Carlson crash is. He collects 
a race car. I don't know who's driving the pace car tonight. So wow. Tyce Carlson and the pace car make contact. We'll watch it again here. The pace car making contact with Tyce Carlson's car on lap 180. Here it is. That's Carlson hitting the wall, spinning and hitting the wall. Let's go back and look at it in slow motion. Once you've gotten sideways that way, yeah. but you notice that the suspension and energy wheel management system, SWEMS as we call it, very, very effective. Everything stayed connected. Yeah, on this replay, we couldn't see really why he started to spin around. Uh, there's another look at it right here on your right hand. There he goes. There He's he goes. on his own. He's really on his own. Nothing seems to be out of the or ordinary and uh, spins around. My dad used to like to make a description of saying when you're running, it's a little bit. And it's Donnie Beachler, the report that got collected with the pace car. And if you look at the front end area, that's out. absolutely been twisted and turned just a bit. Boy, I've never uh, seen that before. Where what a disappointment. Get knocked out of running such a competitive race. Um, he was running in fifth position. Let's go to Calvin Fish. I'm here with Greg Beck, who's the engineer and crew chief for Tice Carlson. Greg, you had a problem with an input shaft earlier. Any connection between that and the incident on track with Tice? No, I don't think so. I really don't know what happened yet. We haven't been able to talk to Tice. Uh, he got out of the car. He's okay. That's the important thing. Going to be a tough break for this team. Speaking to Tice, he said you really needed a podium finish to make it to the next race. You're a little low on budget. How is this going to affect things? Well, I'm, I'm not 100% sure at this point. We have to get back and see where we're going. Things are heading in the right direction for the team. We started third today. We had a really good car. Uh, there were points in the race that we were the fastest car on the racetrack, even after uh, we went in for a while earlier and, and fixed and repaired the car. So we're we're happy with our performance. We just need to find a sponsor and so we get the next race. Okay, we hope to see you there. Thanks a lot. Thanks. All right, there you have the update. Goodyear is your race leader. Ray is running in second. 181 laps completed of 208. The Longhorn 500 continues. 26 laps remaining in the Longhorn 500. There you see the car on the hook right there. That's Tice Carlson's machine being hauled away out of turn two after an accident. And Scott Goodyear is your race leader. Greg Ray is second. Sam Schmidt running in third. That's how they stack up right now. Let's go to Vince Welsh. One of those watching all the exciting action tonight on the big screen TV monitor just to the side us is John Hollinsworth. Unfortunately, John, you're not out there in the mix of it. What happened? Uh, we had a gearbox go out, unfortunately, is really reminiscent of uh, Indianapolis, so we got locked in fourth on lap 60. Fortunately, at Indianapolis, we were able to bring the PCSave.com Lycos car home to the finish. I think uh, we ended up banging the limiter a little too much. I was in a real low gear fourth and uh, uh, just couldn't do it today. So it's kind of disappointing, but uh, we'll be back next race. How about the racing out there on the track tonight? It's great racing. I, uh, we really were in pretty good position. We'd save the car. We'd was really pretty much on my strategy. We reached a hundred lap mark and I was ready to go race. We moved into the top 10 and uh, I was ready to get with the program. You know, it's a long race, but uh, we didn't get a chance to do it tonight. That's John Hollinsworth. Look forward to seeing you in Colorado. Let's go to Calvin Fish. Quick update on Scott Goodyear. Very happy with the balance of the race car. The tires are good. He's good on fuel. They told him to go plus one on the fuel mixture, which riches it up, gives him a little bit more horsepower on the restart, then back it off for the rest of the race. Guys, this is going to be one heck of a start here and one heck of a uh, end of the race. With Scott Goodyear leading uh, Greg Ray's right behind him, and right behind them in the lineup is Sam Schmidt. And don't forget, Scott Goodyear is second in points for the 99 championship, but right now, if he should win this race, it could put him ahead. All right, 184 laps completed. Goodyear, Ray and Schmidt will battle it out. We'll have more for you next. The cleanup continues with 22 laps remaining. The Longhorn 500 and Goodyear and Ray have it going on up front right now, Jack. Scott Goodyear has had a very strong run. There you can see the Speedy Dry and the cleanup crew continuing to work around the racetrack. There's the Pennzoil Panther machine currently posted in the front position and directly behind Scott Goodyear. As we pan back, we'll take a look at number two in your program, number two in the running order, the Glidden Menard machine for Greg Ray. Ray looking for a victory. Your favorite driver, the Sprint PCS car, Ari. I got a pull for Sam Smith in the number 99 Sprint PCS car. Looking uh, 
from behind the wheel from, from his car in Schmidt, third place. Schmidt being thrown, shown in third place, directly behind Sam Schmidt. How about Eliseo Salazar? Now, he is posted in the fifth position in the FUBU machine. A great run for Salazar. You see the red and the blue driving gloves there and there. He says that he uses that to remind himself of the Chilean national flag. He's a lap behind, though. Yeah, so Salazar being shown uh, in the running order behind Sam Schmidt, but being posted in that fifth position. Petro Molly machine, Robbie Unser had problems with a uh, pit stop. The wheel came loose, and he was in contention now. He's uh, shown in sixth position. And uh, Davey Hamilton's had a good strong run, and along with this guy, Stefan Gregoire in the Mexmel car. Now, Gregoire is on the lead lap, and he is in the fourth spot in the Mexmel machine, and you're riding on board with him. And you see the 32.0 there on the dashboard, Ari? That's not the amount of laps they can run. That's what they see on the dash. Fuel meter. Once they see 32 on their dash, that's what they have used. Time to come in, boys. Being shown, being shown in there. Now there's the Davy Hamilton Spinal Conquest car. Now this team with Rick Gallus, they won the Coors Light Pit, Scott, Pit Stop Contest at Indianapolis, earns $37,000. You know what they did with it? They donated it, the crew did, to Spinal Research. That's incredible. Now Hamilton being shown in seventh spot. Directly behind him in the Delco Remy machine for ISM Racing, Steve Knapp. We like to call him Ari Leyendijk's biggest fan. I think so, Steve Back Knapp. Back in 14th spot. Directly behind Knapp, coming into play, the Tybo kickboxing certainty building product special for Johnny Unser in car number 92. It's been a quiet night for Johnny Unser, but he's still out there. He's, he's running 15. on stickers tires. We can see yeah. this, the white marks on the tires. And certainty, one of the new sponsors in the Indy Racing League. We appreciate their support. There's the Yahoo machine, number 21 for Jeff Ward. Ward being posted after leading early on, but had the problems with the, the rear of his car directly behind Ward. Costly right night here. for Ward. Car, yeah, it could cost him the, in the, the points lead. That's number 14. That's the power team car. And that is the defending Indianapolis 500 champion. That is Kenny Breck. A lot of perseverance showed by Kenny Bragg tonight as he has tire problems and also by this man, Buddy Lazier. Lazier, after running very well, started in the back, is now being posted in the 22nd. Oh, no, not the 22nd, because that would be his, his brother, Jacques Lazier. Buddy is in 17th spot. There's Scott Sharp after starting on the top, on the front row. He's had problems in the Delphi machine directly behind him. Buzz Calkins not having a great run in the Bradley Food Mart special, but he is still running in the eighth position. All right, let's go to Vince Welsh. Vince? If there's been one dominant race car tonight, it's been Scott Goodyear's. This is team manager John Barnes. Did this yellow save you in the fuel? Everybody's playing the fuel game. What's it do for you? Hang on, hang on. I'll tell you what, it's, what, it's making a fat guy like me sweat here for a while, but we're looking good now. <laughs> you mean you wouldn't be sweating otherwise? <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but uh, Scott's doing a great job, and Andy and uh, Kevin got the car right on, so... Uh, We'll see what's going on here. Uh, Greg's a hell of a race driver, and I'm sure he's going to do a good job trying to get, get by us. That's what he's paid to do. What's the key here in the last 20 laps, John? Lead. Stay in front. John Barnes in the four car, the Pennzoil Panther of Scott Goodyear. Remember last year when Greg Ray made an incredible run on Billy Boat? Greg Ray was not the guy actually, you know, up front all night long, but in the end when it counted, he was right there, and he's going to be right there again tonight. 20 laps to go, Dave. That's right. Fox Sportsnet has all the Indy Racing League action for you. Join us Sunday, June 27th at 2 o'clock for the Radisson 200, live from Pikes Peak Speedway. Don't miss it here on Fox Sportsnet. 20 laps to go in this race, though. Goodyear is your leader, the Longhorn 500, going for his second win of the year, but Maybe Greg Ray will finally break on through to the other side and get his first victory in the Indy Racing League. And Sam Schmidt challenging as well. On the previous restart, when Greg Ray was bringing the field down, they were coming down very, very slow. Very slow, that's Greg right. Greg Ray got sideways. Scott Goodyear ate him up. Let's see if Scott Goodyear ups the pace a little bit on this next restart. Goodyear going back and forth on the steering wheel, trying to clean off the tires of any small debris that might be there. Now there's the pace car directly in front. He begins to accelerate. Goodyear does likewise. Cat and mouse game on the back stretch here. We're going to go green. Goodyear is cleaning his rear tires, kind of doing a little burn to get the heat in those tires and clean them off. Now he's going to drop back a little bit, let the pace car get away. He's looking in his mirror. There he 
it goes. And here we go, the restart, folks. The Longhorn Black 500. Let's watch him battle out of it's turn fly. three. And a big fly. start for Mr. Goodyear. That advantage can evaporate in less than a lap. Once you get up to full song, both cars could be reunited in a battle for the lead. We are winding down the laps here in the Longhorn 500 presented by MCI WorldCom. Sam Schmidt. You and I said it both. Yeah. Sam Schmidt has had a good restart right up behind Greg Ray there, and this is the lead that Scott Goodyear enjoying right now. This might be a break for Schmidt because of the situation. He doesn't have to worry about that the race traffic. Ah, oh, tough break for Eddie Cheever. The no yellow, Beverage though. Group. No yellow as he gets the car out of the way, and we continue to race. Stretching out the lead up front. As I said, Schmidt doesn't look as effective as the front two cars in traffic, but they've broken away. It's a three-car breakaway, clear sailing. This could be an advantage for Sam Schmidt to at least be able to close on Greg Ray, who runs in second in the Menards car. It's about these three guys right now, but things can change, though. Uh, Greg Ware is not far behind, and he's also the... He's the last driver on the lead lap. Don't forget, Greg Waugh was given a challenge by Dick Simon, finished in the top five. He stayed in the fourth position right now. 192 laps now in the books. We're going 208, so the final stages of this race. Remember at lap 200 last year? You know who the leader was? Greg Ray. But the race went 208 laps, and a lot of his friends that were here in the, in, in the stands thought he had won the race. Could Greg Ray be holding back until after lap 200 to try and make his move and stab his way to the front? Hey, we're going to find out in just a few more laps. I don't think there's no holding back on any of these guys' part right now. Sam Schmidt looks to be closing in just a tad on Greg. And, and Goodyear just inched away a little bit from Greg, but not much. Third place, riding on board with a third place car. Sam Schmidt, the 99 Sprint PCS machine. You see the dash right there? Now look at this line right there. Ari, what is that? Tell the folks. The black part that we see right here is the actual revs. That's, of course, that's the maximum revs right there. They call that a pie dash, and it has, what, four, four or five pages? It has uh, four or five different pages, but you just put it on race page, and it gives you enough information for what you need. And the guys in the pits, they will look at the oil pressure, the oil temperature. You don't need to look at that. They'll look at that for you. I'll bet you right now Scott Goodyear's not looking at anything, Dave exactly. Calabro, except the starter to see when he's going to see that white flag. That's right. 12 laps to go. Look, that's the rearview mirror for the Panther Pennzoil machine. Look at the lead he has right now. About 1.2 seconds the lead for Scott Goodyear. Can he hang on? A little more that lap. He actually pulled away two tenths of a second over like a couple of laps ago. He has just a slight edge. Ever since Scott Goodyear you're scored... You're pulling away. You're uh, pulling away a little bit. Yeah, we That's have it. Kevin Blanche telling him you're pulling away. Ever since he won the MCI World Cup 200 in Phoenix, there is a different Scott Goodyear at the controls of the Pennzoil Panther machine. And to go at the line. I would agree with that. Line. He is a different driver these days. 11 laps right now. Quick report from Pit Road tells us that the problem with Eddie Cheever's machine, a faulty battery. Tough break for Eddie Cheever. Sam Schmidt on the hunt now for second. Sam Schmidt moving up on Greg Ray. And here we are with Sam Schmidt again, and we're going to have a look. He's getting just a little bit closer. He's on the rev limiter, and that is going to hurt him a little bit, but it looks like Sam is just a bit quicker then Greg Ray, and he might be able to get a run here. Great stuff. This is so much fun when you're in the car, too. Nine laps to go now. Nine laps. That's it. Clear and now he needs to tuck behind. Now he needs to tuck behind. Oh, and he had to lift off there. Did you hear that? And immediately has lost just a few uh, leg car lengths on uh, Greg Ray. You heard it. He lifted, and there is the end result. About five car lengths. That's a heavy penalty to play to pay with to just uh, nine laps to go in this race. It's going to take him a couple of laps to get back there, so he really needs to be decisive there. We'll Scott, find out. Scott Goodyear's lead now, 1.3 seconds. Let's go to Calvin Fish for an update on Greg Ray. Well, he's a little short of pace here this evening, guys. He's flat out, and he can't match the speed of Scott Goodyear. He's got a little bit of an understeer in the car. Ideally, he'd like to be a little more neutral right now, but at the moment, he's got his hands full and his mirrors behind him. Do you remember in qualifying night, if you were with us as we telecast the qualifying, one man that was not a happy camper was one Scott Goodyear. Kevin Blanche said they threw everything.
everything they knew at the race car. John Barnes said, I'll take the blame for what we did. But they made the changes, and they have paid off so far for the Pennzoil Panther team. You can see the separation. It's about a short shoot in a tri-oval, the lead that the Pennzoil team has with Goodyear on board. Yeah, I'm talking about... Uh, Scotty, little, you got five to go at the line. Five little, to go at the line. We're a little bit Keep off digging. the pace, which is about a half a tenth of a second a lap. That's just a little bit off. There you hear the call on the radios. Five laps now left for Scott Goodyear, closing in on his second win this season Schmidt's in the Indy Racing on. League. Sam Schmidt making a run now. The key here for Sam is get by the guy on the right. Who's, uh, who's that? That's Kenny, Kenny Brett. Brett. He's got five laps, five laps to challenge. Looks like he's going to get a run on Greg Ray. This is out of Kenny Brad's car. The race leader, Scott Goodyear. Let's check the lead, how big a lead he has right now. The lead, just about 1.5 seconds. And again, he pulled away two tenths of a second, and everybody's concentrating on this duel right here between Greg Ray and Sam Schmidt. Scott Goodyear, 39 years of age, second in the Pep Boys Indy Racing League points going into this race. Folks, he is going to take over the million-dollar chase at the top to of go, the point standing will be Scott Goodyear. Three laps to go now. He finished fourth here in 1997 and 98. Fourth in points and battling now. Sam Schmidt now. Can he make a move, Ari? What do you think? I think that coming out of turn two, Sam is not able to stay in the fall when he's really close to Greg Ray, and that's going to break him up probably. But it looks like he's going to get a run on him here. But now he has to go in that clean air. Stay outside, stay outside, keep your foot in it, keep your foot in it, and get the run on him here. There's Scott Goodyear. Scotty, you're coming to your white flag. White flag right here. That's the greatest sound to hear as a driver, isn't it, when you're out front? The better sound is last. Yeah, the yeah. flag. <laughs> They're pumping their fist. Is it premature? He has one more lap to go. Sam Smith has one more chance right here. He's got to keep his foot in it. He's, he's looking good. He crossed the bow there as Scott Goodyear. A little bit of race traffic directly in front of him, but the Pennzoil Panther you a car. Bit slow. Take your time. You got plenty of time behind you. Here you come there, checkered. There you go. Here he comes. The checkered flag Come comes here, out baby, for here, baby, 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 baby. Scott Goodyear wins the Longhorn 500 presented by MCI World Cup. And Sam Schmidt is not able to pull the trigger and make the pass on Craig Ray. It's Goodyear, Ray, and Schmidt. Great racing, though. What a great race tonight. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And there's the call. Jim Harbaugh celebrates one of the co-owners of that Panther Pennzoil team as Goodyear wins the Longhorn 500, his second win of the season. It's a lot of fun. We'll have more for you on Fox Sportsnet Live. Stay with us.